Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you want some promo or your music reviewed, you can hit up Luke at redmattersite.com. That's S-I-T-E. And of course, you can hit up that email if you want some advice or you want to hear my opinion on any particular topic. You also want to be sure to check me out on Twitter and IG at LukeJamesBGN, and you can find me on Facebook.com slash LukeJamesReviews. Now, I'm not sure if you're listening to this on the YouTube channel. If you're not, just do a search for Luke James Reviews on YouTube, and you'll find this podcast as well as all my review work. And I am on a bunch of streaming platforms, so just look up Luke James Reviews, and you'll find me on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. But finally, we are doing a new podcast episode. I know it's been a couple of months now, I believe, but my life is just crazy as hell, so it's hard to find the time to do the reviews, let alone record a podcast. Either way, I ain't going to get into all that because what I want to do with this podcast is take a look at Drake's discography and break down his projects. I'm going to run down a list, and just to be clear, I'm not going to include his first two tapes, Room for Improvement and Comeback Season, because I feel like they don't really enter the discussion that much. I'm also not going to include any of his EPs or collaboration projects like What a Time to Be Alive with Future, but I am going to include a bunch of his solo albums, mixtapes, playlists. You know how it goes, man. He's got all these different different titles for his projects. I know If You're Reading This, It's Too Late was considered a mixtape, but it was kind of an album. Then he had uh, More Life that was called a playlist. So we don't need to really get into all that shit. This is basically just my opinion, not the end-all, be-all. So we're going to do a top eight here. I picked the eight projects that I think people talk about the most, and that's what we're going to work with. So we're going to start off at number eight. Uh, This is just going to be the first segment, then the second segment. We'll do the bottom four. Well, I guess it would be my top four, because those are the ones I like the best. But anyway, at the worst spot at number eight is Scorpion, man. I remember when this was announced as a double album, I think there was this collective sigh heard around the world because on one hand, Drake is certainly a versatile artist with his blend of rap and R&B, but even still, man, just the idea of him holding down a 25-track album wasn't something that excited most people. Now, I would say Drake is definitely one of those artists who's had a very up-and-down career. When you look at his projects, it's all over the damn place, but you can't really say anything about the mainstream success and money he's had, which is always brought up whenever you have these discussions. I ain't going off that with this list. This is just my personal opinion and how I feel, and I really do feel like this was his worst project. Now, I can admit that there were a couple of decent tracks on this album, but that second half or second disc, whatever you want to call it, because we ain't really getting CDs now, that shit was just brutal to me because it was singing Drake, man. I'm talking about that plain oatmeal with no flavor or sugar in it at all. To be fair, I did think Nice For What and In My Feelings were fun singles because of the bounce elements that were brought in, and God's plan was alright for what it is. It was really just that basic Drake that you expect from him. Nothing amazing, but it has a nice little vibe to it. But like I've said a million times before when reviewing Drake, I don't mind his singing in low doses because I think it can be catchy and it can work for hooks. But when you're listening to him drone on and on with the vocal range of a mashed potato for a whole goddamn project, or in this case on that whole second half pretty much, ooh wee it really is not doing him a lot of favors. So that shit really got boring to me on the second half. But there were a couple of songs here and there I liked. The song I probably thought was the worst, though, was that second single, I'm Upset. I think that is in the running for the worst Drake song ever with that dumpster juice-ass beat. And if anything was interesting about this project, it was the revelation that Drake had this son, although obviously Pusha T came out and put all that shit out there before he could do it, but there was that little surprise on the end. But, you know, not much of a surprise. It's like when someone is throwing you a surprise party and you know the shit is going on because you see people peeking between the curtains. The, the surprise has already been spoiled, so it ain't even that good anymore. But we're going to move on to number seven, and I'm going to go with Views. I honestly kind of feel like this could be interchangeable with Scorpion because it suffers from the same major flaw. It is just very dull and draggy like a dog wiping its ass and balls across your brand new carpet. Now this is also where Drake really started messing around a bit more with those island vibes. We got Hotline Bling, One Dance, and Controlla. Tracks I'm not in love with, but they're danceable and catchy, so if I was someone who still went to the club and went out to a bunch of parties and shit, like if I wasn't washed, I'd probably still get drunk and dance around to those songs and try to make some moves and do what I do, but I'm kind of past that. So, you know, those songs didn't really stick with me too much. But other than that, I hardly remember anything from this damn album. I did go back and listen to these projects, and I went through the track list, obviously. But nothing was really sticking to me, even coming back to it now. I remember when I listened to it, there wasn't a whole lot to it. But, you know, coming back 
uh, all these years later, it still wasn't that great of an album to me. However, I will say Western Road Flows was one of the better rap tracks on here, but even still, like three or four decent tracks out of 20 or however long this project was, it's just nothing to get excited about. And when I look back at this, I gave it a 3 out of 5, but after listening to this shit and working on this list, this is probably closer to about a 2.5, man. There's just really not much to be said about this one at all. Very forgettable, and I don't think it's a great project, so this is why it really is at the bottom of my list. Or the top. You know what? Like, I'm counting down, so I guess this is the top. But it gets confusing, because when people talk about their top records, they're uh, saying what the best ones are. But you know what I'm saying, goddamn. I'm getting all over the place. We're going to move on to number six with this album, or should I say playlist, More Life. I was a bit on the fence with this one when I reviewed it, but it definitely had some decent tracks that helped propel it over Scorpion and Views for me. Of course, he was calling this a playlist because it had all these features and that UK influence was going on it as well, but I think that was something that actually helped hold this project together and garner some interest for it. I know when it comes to gigs, people are very split on him, but I fucks with gigs and I liked his features on here, including when he was doing that whole Batman thing, and even Georgia Smith, Sampha, and Skepta came through with solid performances repping for the UK. I also can't front on Passion Fruit. That song really just grew on me the more I heard it. I think we all heard it everywhere when this project dropped. It was on the radio almost nonstop stop you really had no choice and i didn't think it was an awful track man it's just something that's kind of light obviously you're not going into this expecting some crazy bars or anything it's just kind of a fun song so it got played to death but it was a fun and catchy summer joint that worked for what it was going to do kind of like what i was saying with hotline bling one dance and controller just some you know party tracks or whatever I, I get the appeal but passion fruit is better than those other ones i mentioned uh and even some of the straight up rap tracks on here were pretty cool because drake actually sounded kind of refreshed and reloaded especially on the gigs assisted tracks and free smoke so just like scorpion and views this one still becomes a drag because it has more filler than a 50 cent pack of hot dogs but i'd still put this above them because there is a bit more variety and creativity involved and the features were pretty dope too so there we have it we have eight seven and six Moving down to number five, this is where shit started to get, uh, you know, a little bit, I don't want to say confusing, but where I started to feel like I could mix the projects up a bit. Once I got into five, four, three, uh, not really three, but like five and four, like this middle range. Like I feel like there's a bunch of Drake albums here that could tie into this middle range. But at number five, I end up going with Thank Me Later. And it's kind of funny because I actually seen a lot of people say that they didn't like this one too much at all. But whenever I go back and revisit it, I realize that I actually liked a couple of tracks on it. I thought karaoke was cool because it has this dreamy sort of feel to it. Like it's on some Phil Collins shit, you know what I mean? I can feel it coming Luke James, not the singer, but you know, that's just kind of the vibe that I got on that karaoke shit. It had this sort of cool feel to it. And there really just aren't a lot of misses here. You got Find Your Love. This is one of those tracks that's just kind of undeniably catchy to me. It's not a song I love, but that shit will get stuck in my head whenever I hear it. You got Miss Me with that quality Wayne verse and a very infectious hook. Then you got, of course, Fancy. I love the sample based production on this from Swizz. We had Swizz on the hook. We had T.I. coming through. Just a fun concept song that was directed at the strong independent women. And I really feel like this was a strong debut album for Drake. Obviously, the expectations had been set high with his So Far Gone mixtape, and when this came out, I didn't feel like we were all let down by it. You know, when I think back to this time and this project came out, it certainly wasn't a perfect project, but it certainly kept with the hype and really did uplift what Drake was doing. Like, this came out, and I think people generally enjoyed it at the time and were curious to hear which direction he'd go in. Not to say that that ended up that well, because the past couple of albums he's done have basically been considered to be clunkers, but even still, man, I think there was even some decent rapping happening on this. He had those quality features. I already mentioned Wheezy and T.I., and on Unforgettable and Light Up, I think he stood up just fine with Jeezy and Jay-Z respectively, so I don't know why this album tends to get ranked so low on these lists, like usually I see it uh, higher up in the, god, I am confusing the fuck out of myself with the higher up and the bottoms up and the lower, but you know what I mean, like usually this is one of the albums people say uh, is some of Drake's worst work, at least based on what I've seen, but I don't think it's that bad, man, I think it's one of his middling projects, and I can understand if people actually had this higher up in their list, like as one of their top Drake projects, but anyway, there we go, that would be my bottom four, so coming up next after this little break, we're going to get into the top four, where things will probably get a little bit more interesting, because obviously I'll be more excited to talk about the projects I like. Stay tuned. Hey there, folks. This is Mark, the host of Spectrum Pulse, where I talk about music, movies, art, and culture on YouTube, and you're listening to The Luke James Podcast. 
All right, welcome back everybody. We're gonna jump right back into the list at number four, where I have Drake's So Far Gone project, and I am talking about the 18 track mixtape version, not the cut down EP version that was on streaming services for a while. Although coincidentally, we did have the anniversary for this project just passed, and you actually can get the full version of this on streaming platforms now. So I thought that was pretty cool how things aligned for me as I was working on this, because for a while there, they only had six or seven tracks, probably due to some clearance issues. I remember Drake and Kanye had a little spat on social media about that, but clearly they ironed it out, and now you can hear the whole thing. But anyway, this is the one that really started it all for Drake, and there are plenty of great tracks on here, in my opinion. I remember when I first heard his remix of Kanye's Say You Will, which was called Say What's Real. That track actually really impressed me and made me take him more seriously as a rapper. And it's the same thing with him and Lil Wayne remixing Jay-Z's Ignorant Shit with their version called Ignorant Shit. I always loved that track anyway. Jay-Z's version was great. You had Beanie Siegel on there and they both snapped but I thought this ignorant shit version was really dope as well so I liked all those tracks we had Uptown with Bun B and Wayne that was a really dope track as well with that organ led production and a bunch of great verses and even Best I Ever Had was a fun and catchy single that showcases style really when I look back at this project one of the things that I take from it is that it does have some of his best singing and R&B stuff on here with tracks like Brand New Houston Lana Bagus Sooner Than Later it really just seems like he was trying harder with his vocals back then because the melodies and harmonies are stronger while on his more recent stuff he's singing much more flat and it basically just sounds like he's droning through his damn songs really just a great project here where drake made a stamp on the game with his sound but he also did a great job of expressing where he was at in his life as he was this canadian kid who was basically the chosen one in hip-hop at that time he gets into some of these ups and downs that he dealt with throughout this project he talks about some of that on say what's real he also speaks on this on successful with wheezy and Trey songs that's another great track so all of this is why i think so far gone is well deserving of a spot high up on this list or down on this list you know what i'm saying at the number four spot it deserves to be there so i'm going to clicky click here move down to number three where i have if you're reading this it's too late this is one that often comes up as one of his best bodies of work and i'm not really going to deny that and while the second half isn't quite as strong as the first half to me this album has actually grown on me a bit over time one of the things i really like about this project is how it was a really big switch up for drake because this is an album where he got darker with his whole aesthetic and his flow was switched up too which obviously was mostly due to working with quentin miller i think that's something that will always be a little bit of a against this album for some people especially when the topic of ghost writing comes up and can you be considered one of the goats if you're not writing your own shit but regardless of all that sonically this was a nice change for drake and i really think he pulled it off well i remember when this dropped i was especially impressed with that first run of six tracks legend sampled one of my favorite genuine joints called so anxious so i thought that was a cool intro and then we got that string of moody deep bass bangers with energy 10 bands know yourself and no telling i really like these tracks they really solidified the darker side of Drake, and we got some cool beat switch-ups there as well. And it was the same thing with the song Madonna, where he was coming through with this lurking bass and croaky cadence. Really kind of a weird, creepy feel to that track, but I always liked it, and I liked how he was given this overall sound here. I just can't front on these bangers at all. And while I did give this a 3.5 out of 5 back when I reviewed it, I'm actually feeling this at more of a 4 out of 5 these days. I'm still not down with those awful Party Next Door features on Preach and Wednesday Night Interlude. PND, pretty much every time he shows up on a project, he just doesn't connect with me. I'm not a big fan of his vocal stylings. But that second half, as I said, has grown on me. And a lot of that might have to do with how this project is so much better when compared to some of the newer stuff that he's given us recently, man. That's why, as I was making this list, I really realized that his earlier work is much stronger, in my opinion. The songs used to and Six Man bang harder than I remember them banging. Jungle has that cool lounge vibe to it, so it's kind of chilling. And then you have You and the Six, which is a very heartfelt tribute to his parents in Toronto who helped make him the man he is today. Of course, you even get that 6 p.m. in New York, which is the quintessential time and place Drake track, where he's just venting and unloading. So this is a really dope project. It gets the number three spot. And my number two spot is something that might be a bit controversial, because I think most people have this at number one. And I'm talking about nothing was the same. I didn't love everything about this album, so to get some of the quick negatives out of the way, I didn't care much for either single. Uh, Started from the bottom was all right as a celebratory anthem, but Hold On, We're Going Home was just bland radio pop to me. But those are some minor gripes for an album that still gives us some of the best we've ever gotten from Drake. Worst Behavior is this all-out banger that sounded a bit different from everything else that was out at the time. And 
I like that wild production style. So this was just an all-out slapper. Then we got Come Through, which is a velvety smooth jam made perfectly for late night creeps. And of course you would expect that sort of sound and content from Drake. I think he did it pretty well on this album, including on the song From Time. It's a very gentle track with angelic Janae Aiko vocals. I don't know if I said that right. I mess her name up pretty much every time I try to say it. But she sounded good on here and you're getting some gentle soft piano that actually gives this song a little bit of a chilling feel. So just like I said about So Far Gone, I think the singing and R&B elements are much better on this than his past couple of projects. And as I listened through this album while working on this list, it really made me appreciate how well everything here flowed together, and a lot of that has to do with the production. There are plenty of beats on here that I love, especially the sample-based stuff on Tuscan Leather and that glorious beat switch on Furthest Thing. So sonically, it just seems like things really came together on this album, and Drake had a lot to speak on too. This album gave us the variety that we've come to expect from him, of course, but with a bit more maturity and depth, because while So Far Gone was dealing more with his ascension, this album had him dealing with the pains that actually came from the heightened levels of success and fame that he achieved, whether getting boastful about his status on the language, or speaking directly about familial conflict on Too Much, where we get some of Drake's most honest content and beautiful sample vocals as well. Just a very well-rounded album, so I can understand why people would have this at number one, but my number one Drake album has got be Take Care. Even though the title track on this, by the way, is one of my least favorite Drake songs ever because it just sounds like this very cheesy dance song, pound for pound, this is a Drake album that I come back to the most. Once again, though, just like nothing was the same, I wasn't in love with some of the singles. Headlines was a decent banger, but Marvin's Room really came across as more of a meme track than anything else. And even Hell Yeah, Fucking Right with Wheezy is a decent track because of the production and rapid cadences. There are just a lot of my favorite Drake songs on here. I gotta throw out that Just Blaze production on Lord Knows because it is epic like the gates of heaven opening up, man. When that shit comes through, you just feel the light beaming on you. Angels are playing trumpets and shit. It is just absolutely epic and glorious. And even though Drake was rapping about going in women's purses on there and that didn't make for the most interesting bars, he still held it together and I think Rick Ross floated on there too. My favorite track on here though, and one of my favorite Drake tracks period, is Underground Kings. Always love this beat as well as the clear nod to UGK, and as a song it's a testament to how Memphis inspired him and how he put in a lot of work to make it to this point. Kind of like on this song when he reminds us that he got rich off a of mixtape, which he did. It's pretty interesting to think how Drake came up through Canada. I remember when I first started hearing songs from him, like that song with Trey Songs, it didn't really blow up too much, but people knew what it was, and then all of a sudden he was signed to Cash Money, da 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 da, the rest is history, and here we are talking about his projects. Of course, we're getting versatility on this project too, with wavy tracks like Cameras and the Weekend Assisted Crew Love, which is a very clear standout. And the personal content is still present as well. Look What You've Done and The Ride in particular are smooth cuts that open up about his family, come up, and taking care of his loved ones. I even like the opening tracks, Over My Dead Body and Take a Shot For Me. These ones had very atmospheric vibes, and the first of which has Drake reflecting on his rapid rise to fame, while the second is him speaking to his exes, basically saying, take a shot for me, things didn't work out, but imagine how things could have been if you played your cards right, because I got all the success. So there are a lot of good Drake songs on here, and it is my number one spot. So that's what I came up with, but like I say every time I do a list, man, I could very easily go back and look at this list tomorrow and think, you know what, I'm going to switch these two or move this one here, move that one into this spot, da-da-da-da-da. You know, it just changes day to day. But I do feel pretty confident with this list. I took my time with this, and this is what I came up with. So make sure you hit me up in the comment section with your thoughts. Feel free to list your albums in order to let me know what uh, your list of these would be, because I'm curious to know that. And yeah, man, that's going to be the podcast. It's not a long one. I'm not going to get into too much more. Obviously, I want to say rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. Man, that's just... Just crazy what went on with that. It's still developing as I'm doing this podcast. Uh, I saw that the guy who shot him actually got a new lawyer and he was involved in the OJ case. So that is some new fuckery going on. I don't know why anyone would want to take this case because the whole thing is ugly. But it's just sad to see... Uh, another rapper gone, man. I wasn't a huge fan of Nipsey's music. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've always thought that he was pretty good, but I just thought he could do better. Like, that's what makes it even sadder to me is I feel like he could have even done much more with his music. Like, he was always pretty good, but uh, he, clearly he had so many great ideas. He cared about the community so much. He loved his people. And it's just sad to see that this basically was just some hater out here who thought they had to take his life away just because over some stupid shit, man, over some pride, hatred, jealousy, and ego. Just a very bad combination. And I know people out there are talking about all these conspiracies. So many people think that it's the government and the Dr. Sebi shit and all that. 
even from the start, I didn't think that, man. I mean, Nipsey coming up where he came up and all the things that he's been through, I'm sure he has a past. It was said that these two knew each other and there was a little confrontation in front of Nipsey's store. Then the guy left and came back and killed him. So, you know, I, I didn't buy into all the conspiracy shit and all that. I figured it would just be the simplest explanation because honestly, a lot of the time, that's what it is. Obviously, that doesn't make it any better. It's sad no matter how you want to look at it. Uh, it's an awful story all around, but that just kind of annoyed me. I feel like that kind of downplays what actually happened. There may be some other issues that people could talk about and try to make better, just gun violence and violence in the community in general. So that's all I got to say about that, man. I'm not going to go too deep. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. Hit me up in the comments section, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're not on YouTube in the comments section, I mean, you can let me know what you think on Twitter and IG. I already put all my links out there. Maybe you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes. I don't know. But it just felt good to get a podcast done, man. I, it, it took me so long to get something else done because of just how wild my life is. Hopefully the next one will happen a bit sooner. We'll see what happens, man. Maybe I'll break down some more discographies. It's pretty fun to do that, and I think it does work good with the podcast format. So there you go. Thank you for watching. You won't see me next time, but you will hear me if you're checking out the podcast. I appreciate you guys. Peace.